Genetica is a procedural texture generating program. It's usually used by 3D artists to make textures to apply to their 3D models. However, it's also a great addition to the 2D Illustrator's toolbox. Let's begin by creating a new empty texture. Now go to the Generate menu, and from there choose the Imported Image option. This lets you load a pre-existing image file. We are going to load up some 2D text that I've created earlier, and turn it into something more interesting. My text was saved as a 32-bit PNG, so it has transparency information. What I want to do is extract the shape of my text. So I go to the Filter menu, and I click and drag the Get Channel Control, and drop that beneath my imported image node. On the bottom of the screen are the controls for the Get Channel function, and I'm going to change that to use the Transparency channel. As you can see, we have now isolated the shape of the letters. Choose the Advanced nodes, and then left-click and drag the Substance lab below our Get Channel node. We are going to use the Substance lab to create an interesting material to make our letters from. Left-click on the little tab that says Lab to enter the editing mode for the Substance lab. Choose the Noise menu, and under the Select Noise section, click on Select Type, and then Use Input. This uses the shape of our letters to define the material being made in the Substance Lab. The preview on the left shows you what the final image will look like. At the moment, it's only two colors, not very interesting. I'm going to dive right into the Environment menu, which lets you create complex materials easily. Simply by enabling the Use Environment, I get a metallic effect for my letters that look like they've been punched out of a metal sheet. Now let's open a floating render window. This lets us see a larger, clearer version of our final image. I'm going to move that to one side, and leave it open so we can see the effects of our changes. Clicking the Edit button next to the Environment option opens up a whole range of presets that we can instantly apply to our image. As you see, we can get very different styles and results, just with the click of a mouse. And don't forget that the Category option lets you browse through different styles of material. Okay, that's a nice material, but for the purposes of this demo, let's go and make it more unusual. Choose the Fluid menu, and then check Yes next to the Fluid effect. What this does is make your final image look as if it's underwater. You'll see the small preview has updated, and if we wait just a second, our large preview will update also. So, now to adjust some parameters. I'm going to reduce the glare, which is the amount of light reflected off the waves. I'm going to reduce the wave's depth so they don't distort the image so much. And now I'm going to reduce the fluid blur. Our lettering is a little unclear, and I want to make it a little bit sharper. Finally, I'm going to bring down the fluid depth so that it doesn't look as if our lettering is quite so deep underwater. That's still a little too soft for my taste, so I'm going to reduce the fluid depth some more to make the letters sharper and clearer. There, the large preview has updated, and I'm happy with that end result. Next, I don't want this whole image. I want to extract the letters so it's simply the letters against the transparent background. This is easily done. I go to the Combine menu, and from there I left-click and drag the Combine function to beneath my Substance Lab node. This function takes two images and combines them using a mask, its third input. Let's right-click on the Get channel and use Copy, and I left-click on the third input for the Combine function, and then I right-click there and choose Paste. It's the effect of loading our original letters and extracting the transparency information as a mask. And now our preview window shows the final result metallic green letters in this case. Of course, you could get very different results thanks to Genetica's ability to produce all kinds of textures from stone to painted surfaces to wood to tiles you name it. You can do similar processing in 2D applications like Photoshop, but Genetica does bring with it several advantages. Of course, the node-based editing can be much easier to work with than macro editing. And secondly, Genetica features a range of noise functions, which you are unlikely to see in a regular 2D package. I hope this has inspired you to think of new ways of using Genetica, 
beyond simply making textures for use in 3D applications.